Arma 3 was released in 2013 by Bohemian Interactive and is considered by many to be the milsim of all milsims. Now I've had this game for years and I've played for all about 10 minutes because my old computer was a literal potato. But since then I've managed to upgrade my rig, buy two really good boys and join the actual military. So I'm excited to see just how milsim Arma 3 actually is as well as how it stacks up against everything I've learned over the past four years. So kick back, relax, grab a cold one and let's jump right into this. So upon entering the game, we're met by Staff Sergeant Adams in this sort of virtual reality training simulator, where he'll teach us the basics like movement, shooting, and using our compass to orient ourselves around the world. After running around a bit and shooting a few bad guys, we're finally introduced to the real world. We turn around to find ourselves at a shooting range in the middle of nowhere trying to teach these greenbacks how to fire their weapons properly. But before I get too far, let me try to explain the situation as of right now. So at the moment, we are on the island of Altus, located in the South Mediterranean. Altus is controlled by the AAF, also known as the Greenbacks. The AAF are currently in a fighting conflict against the guerrilla faction known as the FIA. We are part of the NATO peacekeeping operations working with the AAF, determined to ensure the conflict doesn't erupt into an all-out civil war, or something like that. So back on the ground, Sergeant Adams has me run around a bit until I'm fatigued to show off how stamina works in the game. Which I must add, it's refreshing to see stamina in a first person shooter again. There's nothing more realistic than having to deal with the effects of being wore out, so to speak. A few moments later, there's a call on the radio and we need to head out to see what's going on. But before we can do that, we have to find out where they are, which leads to a sort of map triangulation where the greenbacks look for points of interest around them and we try to find it on the map. Then we use their distance and direction to determine where exactly they're located. I really like seeing this incorporated into the game as it gives you a sense of being just a small part of a big world as opposed to a specifically designed linear level layout. Not to mention I just genuinely enjoy land nav. Now with all of that out the way, this is where I get to test out driving and it definitely took a minute to get used to, but I was impressed by how heavy the vehicle felt on the road. I also love how immersive it is to just look around the vehicle to see everyone riding along. It's the little things, man. After a long ride, we finally arrived to find the greenback standing around a bunch of dead bodies. Sergeant Adams didn't seem very pleased and implied they attacked him unprovoked, so he sent me over to search some nearby buildings. Not exactly sure what I'd run into, I found myself cautiously opening the door to a nearby shed, ready to pop a few rounds in the first person with a gun I saw, but instead I just found a small weapons cache. With all of that out of the way, I made my way back to Sergeant Adams and he called in a helo for extraction. One week later, we meet Colonel McKinnon, and he explains to us that an AAF convoy never made it through a checkpoint on its way to Kavala. Fearing the worst, he sends us along the convoy's route, hoping we can figure out what exactly happened to it. This is where we get our first op order, and I have to say, I love how this is presented. We have our four paragraphs here, which explains the situation in detail, our overall mission, the direct execution of that mission, as well as command and signal. This is definitely the most accurate presentation I've seen in a video game, and it does a phenomenal job explaining the operation in depth. We loaded up onto a little bird and I gotta admit it felt great to finally be tasked with our first real mission. Gliding through the air on our steel dragon, we're tasked with locating the missing convoy which doesn't take long before spotting the aftermath of what looks to be an ambush. We touch down a little ways away and this is where the fun begins. So we're dropped off just north of the convoy and the plan is to split into two fire teams and make our way south to secure the site and figure out what exactly is going on here. While moving up, I try to keep tactical spacing between Sergeant Adams and myself, but it doesn't take long before we see someone up ahead. Sergeant orders us to hold fire and he begins yelling out trying to identify who was up ahead. Keep in mind now, we do have to follow the rules of engagement here. Next thing I know, rounds start popping off and my very first firefight begins. I'm hit with the rush of adrenaline and my first instinct is to find some sort of cover. I can see Adams moving up towards the enemy and my best bet is to move up on his left side to try and find an opening through the foliage, giving me a proper line of sight. With two hostiles down, there's still gunfire coming from ahead, but I can't see through the thick brush, so we move up cover to cover trying to get a shot. I end up tossing my first grenade over the bushes. With the immediate threat eliminated, we finally get eyes on the convoy. Sergeant calls out more movement across the way, and it appears to be more FIA combatants, so we open fire. After a long exchange, we decide to start moving up between cover to close the gaps so I can get a clear shot on whoever is left near the vehicles. Then, as quickly as it began, it ended. I took a bullet to the head, bringing my Arma Milsim experience to an abrupt end, just like real war. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. It's been real. I can't wait to see you all again on the. All right, maybe it's not that Milsim. So we reloaded the game, secured the convoy's location, I patched up a wounded greenback, then pulled security while Sergeant Adams figured out what to do next. As nightfall fell upon us, a recon element dropped in to secure the convoy while Sergeant and I hopped onto the helo and made our way back to Kavala. Along the way, we noticed an attack checkpoint and fires blazing within the city as if a war had just broken out. So we put the bird down and proceeded on wheels towards the inner city. Unsure what was happening, I was genuinely excited to see if the entire island had fallen into chaos. Along the drive, we witnessed a lot of passing carnage with dead bodies littering the streets throughout Kavala and AAF troops enacting what appeared to be some sort of martial law. Upon arriving at our destination, we witnessed an AAF trooper pushing a prisoner to the ground. This is where our current character, Conway, decides he should step up and challenge their actions. Our attention turns quickly to the AAF colonel, where our heroic protagonist insists that his fellow corporal, and I quote, arrest them. The hell it is, corporal, arrest them. Um... Okay, anyway. So that pretty much wraps up the prologue and we can finally begin the actual game. We're greeted by a collection of newsreels, basically showing us how deteriorated the situation has become between the NATO, AAF, and FIA forces, essentially on the brink of total war. We also learn that the NATO forces will be withdrawing from the region entirely. And due to rising tension between NATO and AAF relations, it would seem the situation has gone from bad to worse. Only time will tell what happens now. From here on out, we'll be playing as Corporal Carey, currently stationed on the island of Stratus, which is located just southwest of Altus. After a short helo ride, we arrive at Outpost Rogaine, where I'm told to talk to Lieutenant Edwards, and he tells us we need to assist McKinnon with logistical support down at Camino. So we load up into a truck and head out down the road. We approach a roadblock, and we start getting the feeling that the greenbacks are on edge. Very unsettling vibes going on. Regardless, we head on through towards Camino until Sergeant Adams and I spot a flip vehicle up the road. Turns out this is McKinnon's ride. We try and provide first day, but he's gone. Next thing I know, we hear explosions in the distance. It seems a full-on attack is happening, and we have no idea what is going on. Adam says we need to start moving, so I follow him into the woods up ahead. What happened next, I wouldn't have expected in a million years, but the greenbacks are shooting at us, plunging me into my second firefight. Green on blue. I say again, green on blue. AAF forces considered hostile. Hold your ground. Out. Front. After securing the area, we decide to make our way back to Rogaine, but it soon becomes clear that the AAF have just launched a full-scale attack against all remaining NATO forces on the island. Since Rogaine just got hit pretty hard, Sergeant decides we should make our way to Outpost X-Ray in hopes that they've had better luck, and it doesn't take long before we run into more hostiles. Contact! Medic! Bad! 75 meters! Front! Move up! Soldier! 75 meters! Left! We eliminate the threat and top the hill, only to find that Outpost X-Ray has been completely abandoned. We notice a friendly bird flying over, heading towards LZ Baldi, so we start heading that way. We're engaged once again from about 300 meters away, so we take cover by some rocks and return fire. After a long, grueling firefight, we finally eliminate the last of them. And just as we start moving out, an AAF jet buzzes over LZ Baldi, sending the entire area up in flames. Echo, do you copy? Echo! With the gravity of our situation starting to settle in, we decide to take cover in a nearby forest so we can figure out what to do next. After laying low for a while, we finally make contact with some survivors via the radio, and we head out in their direction. This is when everything changed for the worse. Fuck! Sarge! Sergeant Adams! Jesus! And just like that, Sergeant Adams, the closest friend I had out here, was gone. But I had to act fast, so I grabbed the radio, marked Adam's body on the map, and started off towards the survivors. Getting there was no easy task as I came across a small greenback patrol, but I managed to handle them fairly easily and link up with the group in an abandoned building. Now, under Lacey's command, we plotted a course a few clicks west in hopes of regrouping with another group of survivors. This is my first time being a part of a larger fire team, and I was excited to see the dynamic change on our next contact. Thankfully, I didn't have to wait long as we ran into trouble in the woods not long after setting off. I took a ricochet round to the shoulder, but kept up aggressive fire. 
As the fighting came to an end, I received medical attention from the dock. And although we suffered a casualty, with the looming threat of the AAF, we had to keep moving fast. After linking up with the rest of the survivors, we made our way to Camp Maxwell and linked up with the rest of the NATO forces. Led by Captain Miller, Camp Maxwell is the last bastion of defense against the now hostile AAF forces. In an attempt to orchestrate some semblance of retaliation, Captain Miller has devised several key missions that will hopefully get us off of this dreaded island. Due to the dire situation, we're immediately tasked with securing a downed helicopter a few miles west of our position in search for any survivors. I'm thrown into Alpha Squad, led by none other than Sergeant Conway himself. Remember our noble protagonist from earlier? The hell it is, Corporal. Arrest them. After loading up on ammo, we head out towards the wreckage. As we approach the crash site, it becomes clear we're not the first ones to arrive on the scene. Secure the area and find the pilot to be alive, but in pretty bad condition. While Doc provides first aid, we receive word that a QRF is en route from Gurna. Sergeant Conway tasked me with laying mines around the perimeter and pulling security. Soon enough, the greenbacks show up, but we hold them off with ease. Sadly, the pilot didn't make it, so we destroyed the crash site and head back to base. Over the next few days, we're set out on a wide array of missions, from night raids to flying recon drones to an all-out assault on Air Station Mike 26, where I was able to call in artillery, which was awesome. All in all, we stayed busy under Captain Miller's command, giving the Greenbacks a hard fight, and I'd love to take this opportunity to focus on a few key features I noticed while playing this far. The first of which being the gunplay. Now keep in mind, this game is 10 years old, but despite its age, I really enjoy the ballistics in the sense that between 100 and 200 meters, the bullet rises above your crosshair, and beyond 300 is the drop. I definitely notice this consistently when I feel like most FPS games don't incorporate the rise at all. On the topic of gunplay, though, I also love how each mag has its own ammo count, so reloading doesn't magically refill your magazines. They remain in your inventory with the same amount of ammo, which is great. Second is the camera and movement. I love that the camera is attached to an actual 3D mesh, meaning when I look around, I can see my body. Not many first-person shooters use this setup, and although there are times it's difficult to walk through doorways, I'd say this is a huge plus. Third takes us back to when I first joined that larger fire team, and I noticed they were moving in a wedge formation. I found this to just be the icing on the cake, as the wedge is the foundation of infantry movement, and to see this happening and finding myself falling into the fire team as a single unit, part of an actual formation, just felt amazing. Now I already mentioned the op order, but I feel like reiterating just how awesome it is to be able to understand the exact mission you're getting into. From the moment you step off, you already understand why you're there, what your objective is, and who is going with you. It's just the coolest thing, really. Now, I've barely scratched the surface so far, and I'm excited to see what else this game has to offer, but these were just a few things that stuck out the most. So, with all that said, let's jump back in. So, after many successful raids, Captain Miller decides we need to lay the groundwork for a full invasion. His plan is to take the Aegea Marina. Miller will lead Delta behind enemy lines to take up an advanced position north of town, while Alpha and Bravo squads assault the military range on the southeast side. Charlie is tasked with hitting Camp Rogaine in an attempt to contain any counterattack that might flank our main assault. I'm put into Alpha Squad, and after linking up with Bravo and assaulting the range, we'll converge on the town from the southeast while Miller hits it from the north. After securing the town, we'll entrench our position and await reinforcements. We set off late in the afternoon, and after linking up with Bravo, begin our assault on the military range. Fire at that soldier! Northwest! After clearing the perimeter, we begin moving up towards the range. With the range secure, it's time for phase two. 
moving into the village. And with Charlie's squad being overrun, it seems time is not on our side. Soon enough, the sky is filled with greenback helos and a large amount of troops begin pouring in. Captain Miller decides it's time to fall back and tells us we're to be picked up off the coast to the north. So we headed out in that direction. And although we ran into contact when topping the hill, it wasn't too much to handle. What was alarming though was the fact artillery began shelling our position. With that in mind, we kept moving as fast as we could. And to make matters worse, greenback paratroopers started falling from the sky ahead of us. With infantry ahead and artillery closing in, we made quick work of the opposition, and eventually the boats were in sight, and not a second too late. Hey, you, Alpha. Get into the boat. We climbed aboard the boats and set off into the sunset. It seemed this entire ordeal was finally coming to an end, and the sweet smell of victory filled the air. I couldn't help but think back to all the good times we had over the last few months. All the friends I made and crazy shenanigans we got into, as well as, sadly, the friends we lost. This was certainly going to be one hell of a story to tell, and I was excited to finally get back home. And then, of course, this happened. To the left, fast movers, inbound. Sir, orders, open fire! Needless to say, we didn't make it. Thankfully, I'm washed ashore with no idea where I am. I managed to find a radio nearby, and I'm told to make my way north to meet up with two survivors. Armed with only a pistol, no map, and greenbacks everywhere, this certainly didn't seem like it was going to be an easy task. I'm soon blessed, however, by finding a pair of binoculars, and I start scoping out the situation. Then I spot a helo coming in hot, and I wait in the bushes to see what's going on. Sure enough, it decides to drop off a few greenbacks just up ahead, and I figure it's about time to get out of there. I make it back to shore and figure my best bet is to slowly make my way to this group of buildings and hopefully find something useful. As I approach the building, sure enough, I hear gunshots and a loud snap. After running inside, I take cover for a second before deciding to try and move up to the next building and get some distance between us. With the greenbacks closing in, I know I have to get out of there quickly, so I make another dash for it. Thankfully, I make it inside, but not before taking around. With no bandages, the situation isn't looking good. I decide to start cautiously peering out of the windows. Sure enough, I see a greenback and take the shot. With two down and in desperate need of a bandage, I scan the area and make a run for it to search the bodies. I manage to grab a rifle, backpack, bandages, and a map, which means I can finally try to figure out where exactly I am. As I adjust my bearings, I realize I'm located here, surrounded by God knows how many hostiles, and my goal is to get to here and link up with Lieutenant James. With no time to waste, I headed out in their direction. Taking refuge in a building, I engaged a few hostiles for the second floor. It was around this time I started feeling a bit like Rambo, and for good reason. After annihilating what felt like an entire Greenback army, I loaded up on ammo and even found this big boy to bring along. And thankfully it didn't take long before I was able to use it. With this much power in my hands, I wanted to test the limits, so after spotting a vehicle in the distance, I loaded another round and sent it downrange. That is epic. Soon enough, some more infantry showed up, which wasn't too big of an issue. I was then given yet another opportunity to make a big boom. With so much carnage left in my wake, I was feeling pretty good about topping this hill and meeting up with Lieutenant, but for some reason, the Greenback still wanted a fight.
And with the last of the greenbacks eliminated, I could make my way over this hill once and for all, and finally finding Lieutenant James. After waiting for nightfall, we decided to move out. A short hike later, we linked up with a small group of rebels where I was told to drive them north. We passed through a couple roadblocks and I became aware that we were on our way to meet with none other than Captain Miller himself. Apparently his location was compromised by a greenback patrol, so we stopped a ways away and I made my way up on foot. We made pretty quick work of the greenbacks and Miller and I made off to join the rebels at their camp. Now we introduce Stavro the leader of the rebels here on Altus and our new commander. And it's at this point in the game that everything changes for the better, which I'll explain soon. But our first task is to set up an ambush on a greenback convoy, steal one of their supply trucks, then bring it back to camp. As we're stepping off, we get word over the radio that I'm to take charge of this operation, and I've been given a small squad to command. So after making my way to my team, sure enough, I'm the squad leader, and I'm presented with an entire arsenal of commands to give out. This genuinely blew my mind, and I was stoked to see how much flexibility I was given in regards to leadership. So I figured I'd take a quick break and ask the internet a couple questions to fill me up to speed. After learning enough to get started, I devised the plan and figured this spot along the route would make a great ambush. As the convoy would slow down when approaching this turn, I can possibly set my men in these buildings for cover. We arrived to the destination, and after having a bit of trouble working with the AI, I figured maybe it would be best to set them up on this hilltop instead. With everyone in place, we waited for the convoy to arrive. Contact MRAP 100 meters to the right of us. And with that, the ambush was over. Our next task was to get the supply truck to a secured location. So I told our engineer, Geikos, to drive while the rest of us followed him in the truck. Along the way, I was surprised at how well Geikos handled the trip and how immersive it was to just be riding as part of our own little convoy. We eventually made it to the drop-off, and while talking to the rebels, we noticed the greenback helo in the distance. Next thing I know, all hell breaks loose and everyone is scrambling to get out of there. The team and I hop back into the truck and take off into the trees. It doesn't take long though before crashing into a rock and flipping the truck. Sadly, we lost Leventus and Gekas in the crash. So Samaras, Chorus, and I made our way on foot through the valley, until taking refuge in a small shack to hide from the Helos. After everything finally died down a little bit, we continued towards the new destination, an old factory nearby. I'm glad to see that you made it here. Moving our camp at this time was... Uh, a rather unexpected task. Welcome to our new home, the factory. But before I started settling in, I really needed a minute to think about everything that just happened. This was my first time in a leadership role, and I managed to lose two good men. Although we executed the ambush with perfection and everything went perfectly, that getaway proved deadly. But hey, at least Samaris and Koras made it, and that's what matters. So with all of that behind us and a few lessons learned, it's time for our next mission. And this was a big one. The situation is simple, after losing our fuel trucks we're low on resources and we've received word that one of them is being held at a small industrial complex just south of the Kavala Highway. So the plan is, I will lead a small group from the north and cross the highway heading south, linking up with Sigma and Gamma squads along the way. Then together we'll move on to the compound, eliminate any resistance, seize the fuel truck and take it to a safe house close by. With the plan set, we load up and roll out. We set off and make our way south to link up with Sigma Squad, where we pick up Samaras and Verga. Next, we have to cross the highway, but I want to do this right, so we follow Doctrine and I set up Chorus and Verga on security while the rest move across. And while they pull security, I grab Chorus and Verga and we move across. Now, although it took a little effort getting the AI to understand what I wanted them to do, it actually worked out pretty well and I felt good about it. So we continued south and linked up with Gamma Squad, bringing our squad count up to 8 men strong, which was pretty awesome because I felt like we could do a lot of damage. So with the full team together, we made our way to our second road crossing. 
We spotted quite a bit of traffic along the way and settled in behind some rocks to wait it out for a few minutes until finally crossing the road. Unlike last time, we decided to just make a run for it as trying to set up these guys into an LDA crossing would have taken far too long for such an exposed road. Once across, we set up an ORP of sorts and Chorus and I set off on a little leader's recon to scout the objective. With eyes finally on sight, I got the feeling attacking from the southwest wasn't the best idea. I'd much prefer to attack from the high ground and after looking at the map for a minute, it seemed the best approach was going to be from the southeast, which meant we had quite a long trek to go, so Chorus and I made our way back to the group and started heading south on a long flank. A few minutes into our movement, we noticed a couple greenbacks hanging out around an abandoned hamlet, and although I loved my guys with the utmost respect, I felt stealth was paramount and decided to go at it alone. So I moved up as quietly as I could towards the enemy and managed to take a position behind an ATV, giving the perfect opportunity for a double kill. With all the cards in place, it was time to take the shot. Success. With the hamlet secure, we set up a perimeter and pulled out the map to get our bearings straight. It was also at this location I realized I could set my squad into actual fire teams. So I went ahead and created two fire teams, Alpha, which would be our main assault, and Bravo, which was our smaller recon element. With the fire team set, it was time to continue on our flank. As we made our way up the hill, we noticed an enemy tank perched up on another hill to the east. After a quick survey, it became obvious this tank had a very clear overview of our drop-off location. And I decided it was best if we went ahead and took care of that now. So we set up another ORP and I grabbed Bravo team to move out towards the tank. Along the way, we tried to stay as hidden as possible and managed to get within 100 meters on its rear. With the tank destroyed, our flank was secure and we linked back up with the group to proceed up the hill on the east side of the compound. With everyone in place, it was time to begin the assault. Target in sight. Two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Weapons free. Team blue, fall back. Roger that. One has been Team Blue, move up. Copy. Solid copy. Contact. Man, 200 meters. Front. Waiting. Contact. 18 soldiers. 75 meters. Front. As the initial firefight came to an end, it was time to advance. Team Blue, move 75 meters. Front. Medic, 100 meters to the rear. Target down. With the southeast side of the compound secure, I sent Bravo to the top of this hill to provide Overwatch as Alpha prepared to move through the objective. We managed to secure the fuel truck, but sadly it was empty. While on the radio, we were attacked from the north, but held them off pretty easily. Command mentioned another fuel truck to the southeast and wanted us to make our way there. And with the help of Kappa Squad located just north of the installation, we can hopefully overwhelm the enemy forces and make a way with the new fuel truck. So with the looming threat of a larger QRF response, we loaded up into the trucks and made off towards the new objective. We posted up on a hill overlooking the compound and got a feel for the layout before deciding on a plan. So the compound seems pretty heavily fortified and the truck is located right in the middle. With Kappa Squad ready to attack from the northwest, I figure it's best if I take my guys to the south and attack while they're busy. I decided to leave Bravo's squad on the hill to man the machine gun on this technical where they can rain down suppressive fire once the fighting starts. With everything ready, I grab Alpha Squad and start moving into position. With Bravo providing overwatch, we'll know where the enemies are as we're moving in. As we approach our final staging area, I ready the radio and call on the order. Omega to Kappa, we'll need your help with the construction site. Move in, over. And with that, we begin. Team Red, lock and load. Samaras, move up! Copy 
Fuck, I'm hurt! Changing mag! Soldier, 75 meters, front. Rifleman, 100 meters, right up ahead. 100 meters, right. Red one. Red one. Man, 100 meters, just up ahead. And finally, after a grueling fight, we managed to secure the objective and successfully acquire the new fuel truck. While Alpha Team loads into the transport, I hop in the fuel truck and we set off towards the drop-off. Along the road, Captain Miller calls on the radio, inquiring about his idea to use the fuel truck to take out a high-value AAF target. So I'm faced with a decision to either drop off the fuel truck to the Rebels or bring it to Miller. Now, considering everything I've been through, I feel like I trust Captain Miller's judgment. So ultimately, I decided to bring the truck to his location. After dropping off the fuel truck, I hop in with Bravo Team and we set off back to base. Returning to camp meant some well-deserved R&R and a nice opportunity to think about the previous mission. All in all, I'd say we executed everything to perfection, from crossing the highway, to setting up an ORP and sending the leader's recon, to the adaptation of our assault plan, then taking out the enemy tank in preparation for our drop-off. The assault on the initial compound did result in a few injuries, but nothing too serious. After finding out the fuel truck was empty, we adapted and proceeded with purpose to the new objective. We set up an overwatch and figured out an avenue of approach. Bravo used the heavy machine gun with excellence, offering some much needed suppression, while Alpha Team used violence of action to push into the compound with unrelenting force. It truly was an awesome experience, man, and to make it just that much better, I didn't lose a single soldier this time. So after finally playing Arma 3 for a few hours, I must say I'm very surprised by how well this game has held up. Although it's a decade old, I was genuinely impressed every step of the way. All in all, I must admit this game certainly deserves its Milsim credit, and I wish more games would approach this level of depth. Now with all that out the way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you made it all the way to the end here, I just want to give you a personal shout out. But sadly, it's time for me to get off and get back to those good boys I was telling you about, so I hope everyone has a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.